episode this is because I've been posting on X, I've been posting here, and it's just been so much right now. But this is a Soul Not For Sale podcast. We got Tucker Carlson and Theo Vaughn. And Tucker Carlson, as much as he doesn't want to say the term America first because he feels like it's so loaded, he right now is letting Theo know what his position is. And he also calls out the new Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, which is pretty, pretty big. And somebody needs to do it. Somebody needs to call out all of these politicians who are focusing all of their energy on something that's going on very, very far away from their own country. It's just, it's not xenophobic, it's not racist, it's not anti-Semitic, it's just, if you're a politician, you should probably be focusing on the people who elected you, on the country that you're in. Just saying. And Tucker is just saying the exact same thing, and Theo Vaughn shows himself as someone who's learning a lot from interviewing these people. He's gaining what Joe Rogan calls an unexpected education from all this. Let's get into the clip right now. And not serving their interests and telling them to shut up again and again, calling them names. You know, something, you've got a legitimate question. Like, why should I support a war with Iran? Shut up! You know, calling me, what? You know, I have four children of draft age. Like, right. why is that not a fair question for me? Shut up! And you do that enough, and I have recourse because I have a platform. Um, but most people don't. And if you tell them to shut up enough, like we don't care that you care about gas prices and your stupid pickup truck. Well, some people like their pickup trucks and they use them for work. And if it's not affordable to fill it up, that's a big deal for them. And if you're like, shut up, climate change, pig, you know, your nephew ODs on fentanyl and nobody cares. Like if you keep that up for long enough, you will make people radical. And why wouldn't they be radical actually? Yeah. And I'm so insulated for most of it because I have enough money and I'm not in debt and my kids are grown and paid for. And like, I'm, I'm in a much easier position than most people. Right. And I feel radical just watching. Right. And so why wouldn't they be on the brink of, of being unreasonable? And it doesn't need to be this way. You don't have to solve all of people's problems. Like some problems are very hard mm. to solve and people know that. There's no magic button you press that ends inflation or stops fentanyl. And everyone knows that. All you need to do is express the fact and do it sincerely that you care. You acknowledge these are big problems. But when the Speaker of the House, who I know is a nice guy from your state, the new Speaker of the House comes in and the first thing he does is issue a statement on behalf of a foreign country. That's the most important thing. I'm, and I'm not even against the statement, but right. I'm just saying like, what bigger statement does that make? That's him, Mikey Johnson? Yeah. And he's the speaker? He is. And Praise God. But I mean, it, damn, Mikey. He's a nice guy, and I'm not against him, but I'm just saying, like, if you think the welfare of another country is the most important thing for you as the one of the leaders of our country, third in line to the presidency, you have lost the thread, son, because it's not. Nothing is more important for the leaders of our country than our country and how its 350 million people are doing. So I was enraged by that. And people are like, oh, are you for Hamas? Of course I'm not for Hamas at all. I'm for America, actually. I shouldn't even have to answer that question. Yeah. Are you for Israel or Hamas? I mean, obviously I'm for Israel over Hamas, but, but that's irrelevant. I'm for America. And no one even asked that. And I feel deep resentment about that, that the concerns of this country yeah, are of no concern. Right, right. It feels like our concerns don't even fucking matter anymore. They don't matter. That's why it makes me wonder, are we just a shell company for Israel? Are we just a shell company for China? Like, are, where, where are we anymore? Like, are we just... Well, there are a lot of people who live here who really like it here, who were born here. Oh yeah, here, I love it here. Who I know you do, and I'm just saying like, it doesn't have to be this way. We, you know, there are people, there are hundreds of millions of people whose ancestors are buried here and they wanna stay here, they don't have another passport. And it wouldn't be hard to rally them and just say like, you're a Democrat, you're a Republican, you're this, you're that, but we're all American and let's have a conversation about what's best for our country. You would get people from all sides being like, that's right, that's the right conversation. We may not even agree but that's the conversation we should be having. And if you don't do that, I'm just telling you, you play with fire. People go crazy. And I'm totally convinced that the mass shootings we're seeing and the massive spike in mental illness that we're seeing, which is leading to the mass shootings, these are manifestations of the frustration and the hopelessness that people feel when they realize their leaders don't care about them. I believe that, I can't prove it, yeah. but I believe it because I happen to live in a place with a lot of you know, people who are not kind of succeeding in the modern world and they're good people and they have skills 
and they've been here, their families have been here for hundreds of years, we should care about them. I agree. But see, yeah, I think our country, our country has been compromised by people that don't care and they don't see value in that. And it feels like it's just um, about uh, a bottom line or it's about, I don't know, some goal that to me seems so erroneous, I can't even fathom that you wouldn't have feelings. Like when you're like that Sackler family that's just let watching people's children die. Just you can make money off of a fucking pill. Who cares? What are you, what are you going to get? Another like half bathroom or something like what are you going to get exactly like i just i don't understand the goal sometimes of um of some of that or why people would think that selling someone out to such a point where they don't have any purpose where you take away their hope you know uh we had a guy on here talk about meaning this guy john verveke and he was real interesting this guy uh is from canada and he just talks about meaning and when people don't have like um when they don't feel like they're supported by, I'm going to fuck it up, but if they don't feel like they're part of a group or they don't feel like... Um, if they're totally cut off from other people and just floating around atomized and alone, right. it drives them crazy. Right, you go crazy. Yeah, and then like you get you put an them in solitary confinement. Exactly. So you've basically taken so much of America by taking away like things that brought us together. Yes. And some of those things were smaller towns. Man. Like I said, Theo Vaughn is getting... He's getting that education. It's uh, it's amazing to see. I called it out. It sounds ridiculous right now, but he interviewed Tucker Carlson before Rogan did. You give him, you give him five, six more years of this, he replaces Rogan. Rogan goes off into the mountains, does stand-up comedy on cliffs and ridges and whatnot, bow hunts. Theo Vaughn takes over. I would say me, but I am uh, the black Tucker Carlson, so. I already got a roll to film. Sorry, but um, but man, he's so right. They're so right, you know. And and Theo Vaughn is asking that question that I've asked so many times. Why would you do this? Like, what's the goal in doing this? What does this do for you to to have people in this state of demoralization and destabilization and addiction and obesity and sickness and fear and paranoia like what what's the goal of that if you're supposed to run a country and you would think you'd want everybody in this incredible shape you'd want everybody in this incredible standing you'd want everybody to have these incredible opportunities because that's your job your job is like to make it the best possible. But like the Ovan was just questioning, it's like, it doesn't seem like that's it. It doesn't seem like that's not everyone in the government feels like that is the quest. And Tucker having to explain that he's for America. And it's so true. You get that branding of, are you for Hamas? If you think that, you know, the focus shouldn't be on what's going on in Israel, are you for Hamas? And it's like, no, no, of course not. Right. And even if you are, even if you are someone who's a Palestine supporter, like either way, because either way, if you're like, I don't think we should focus on what Hamas is doing. I don't think we should focus on what Israel's doing. You're going to get branded something. I've brought it up before. It's either you're for open air prisons or you are a anti-Semite. And there's no in between. Again, I've said it before. I've said I've said it on X. I've said it here. Only country in the world taught to be ashamed of worrying about them themselves. No other country. Check, check. Go Google the news anywhere else in the world. No other country experiences it. No other country makes people feel ashamed for being white. No other country makes people feel ashamed for being black. No other country has such drastic divides so many divides you're left and you're right you're black and you're white you're israel you're palestine you're ukraine you're russia <laughs> so you're for the police against the police like you're there's so many no other country's doing every other country is just like how do we how do we get the people in a, to a better standing not every country of course you know because there's many that are corrupt out there you know china Russia, but I mean, even Russia looks after their population pretty well, pretty well. 
I wouldn't believe all the mainstream stuff you hear. I would go and look into what's going on there. I have, uh, I don't, I, I don't have friends there, but I have friends that have relatives there, and it's not everything that we're hearing. Just saying. But uh, you know, if you're one of those people that is more worried about what's going on in your community, your town, your city, your state, don't don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. You know, don't. Doesn't mean you're a hateful person. Don't let people try. like. I hate because I have a white side of my family. I hate the idea of white people having to be ashamed of who they are, or wanting, or having to be ashamed of wanting to provide for their own and protect their own. It's such a wild thing because, as someone in the black community, it's like I wish I saw more of that. So if you're in a community that already does that, don't sacrifice it. Don't sacrifice it over shame, the white guilt that they thought. Sacrifice it over that. Are you crazy? You have something special. You have something that every other country and place looks at and goes, wow, that's the dream. And then they come over and they try to share it. Don't give it up. You're While, while you're being taught to give it up. I sound like a white nationalist right now. <laughs> while you're being taught to give it up, other people are coming over here and being and, and kind of getting together and saying, yeah, we're going to take care of our own. We're going to do this. No shame. Black person says that there's zero shame. If a black person says that they get applauded by me, I would applaud them. I'd be like, amazing. Wants to take care of his own spectacular Jewish people do it. They have a, a beautiful community aside from everything that's happening now. And some of them are feeling in danger. They have an amazing community. Asian people do it. Amazing. I've even seen people over from Africa. They're doing it. Filipinos, brown people, Pakistan, India, they're all doing it, doing great. None of them are taught to be ashamed. You'd be a wild racist person if you said, you know, you should have a little, there should be, you know, you should check your brown privilege. Imagine someone said that. You know, you should check your black privilege. <laughs> you get into a fight. Don't do it. Don't even test it. Don't even test it. I'm just saying, yeah, I, I love what Tucker's saying. I love what Theo's providing in this podcast. It's just, uh, it's amazing. I can't wait to see his next interview and his next interview. You know, Theo has an interview with a garbage man, an NYC garbage man. And, you know, Theo's a comedian and they're having a good time and it's fun and it's funny. But I'm really inspired by interviews like that because we should be talking to people like that. You know, like uh, there was someone who messaged me on Instagram somebody who watches the channel, an older gentleman, and he's a blacksmith. And I want nothing more but to be able to get over to him and actually do an interview with him. Because I think that's amazing. He's a blacksmith. We got to start. <laughs> the people who are famous right now, the people who are in charge, my God, but the people who are famous right now, they don't deserve it. You know, I had this video that I did really early on when I started the podcast. It's like episode like five, you know? And I was talking about the 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 idea of fame and how a person like you or I should be more concerned about being famous when you walk into your house, more concerned about being famous amongst your kids and your family and your community, because if you're if you're at that type of stature, you should be significant. If you're significant, then you're doing things for your community. A lot of the people we see now that are famous, they're not significant. They just have money. They just do things. They're just in the public eye. And that goes for the politicians as well. They're not significant. They're just successful. You know? And then when you really break down what success is, it's like, are they even that? Turns out they're just they just people who have money and they have some power. It's not significant. It's not successful. It's just, I don't know, controlling. I don't even know what to call it. Oh, man. But let me know what you guys think of uh, what Tucker was saying. Being for America. Be for America. Be, f be for where you're from. Don't be ashamed of it. It's crazy to be ashamed of it. You live in the greatest country ever to exist. Ever. And imagine being ashamed of it. <laughs> like, go, go, go talk to somebody who's... Again, I sound, I sound like an old white guy here. I was going to say, like, someone who's, like, Mexican who just came over. Yeah, you know what I mean. Other people come over too, but you know what I mean. I'm just saying, somebody who just came here, okay? Okay, sorry. But talk to them and, and talk to them about, uh, you know, if they're ashamed. If, if, 
if they feel like there should be any shame for what they're doing, shame for the money that they're making now, the opportunities that they have. And they'd be like, no. You know what's there instead? Pride. But but I understand. I understand you don't want to walk around with white pride, some of you. I get it. I get it. <laughs> and you'll be like, the black guy on YouTube said that I can be proud to be white. And they'll be like, you're fired, sir. You're fired. <laughs> leave the office now <laughs> my bad i don't want to get anybody in trouble don't want to get anybody in trouble uh i can i keep forgetting to say it at the beginning so i'll say it now emails we're trying to amass a bunch of emails because i am thinking that eventually you know independence is key i've always worked for myself i'm not sure everything is uncertain when you're making things online and it's not uncertain because i'm not going to quit but the platforms, you know what I mean? So I'm thinking that there's gonna have to be a time where I have to start communicating with people directly. I think that's gonna have to be a thing because you just never know what's gonna happen. So emails, IamCoachColin.com, go and check it out. Scroll right to the bottom, there's the email section. Put your email in there. You can even say something to me if you want. Um, and uh, IamCoachColin.com, great resist shirt. And uh, like the episode. Subscribe, and I'm out.